all our students we have another question for income statement and with the name of boris it's a 2018 examination question paper <clears throat> the following balance is extracted from his books on 30th april 2018 now as you can see the year is ending on april 18 then it must have been started on after april comes may first may 2017 okay first of all we have revenue revenue also known as sales we have purchase return inward also known as sales return we have return outward also known as purchase return now inventory that is given in the list is always opening inventory and inventory that is given in the notes it is always a closing inventory and the first inventory is always opening and 30th inventory is always closing then we have a disposal account if disposal account balance is given as a debit then it must be a loss on disposal if instead disposal account is given as a credit then it must be gain on disposal okay because gain is credit in nature and loss is debit in nature then we have a bank loan as you can see the year ends on 2018 but we need to repay the loan in 2020 so this is after more than one year so therefore it is a non-current liability if instead we need to repay the loan on april 2019 or before april 2019 then it must be a current liability then bank loan interest already we have paid some of the interest and uh, the remaining portion must be accrued then we have a bank balance as you can see bank is debit so therefore it is a current asset we have trade receivable state payable provision for doubtful debt our premises is basically non-current asset building is known as premises the space and uh, we have a computer equipment it is also nca non-current asset and fixtures is also one of our non-current asset then we have provision for depreciation provision for depreciation is basically total depreciation till date so we have provision for depreciation for all three types of non-current assets it is no, also known as accumulated depreciation now administration is an expense carriage there can be two types of carriage one is carriage inward and one is carriage outward but examiner here mentions carriage so what do we suppose is it a carriage inward or outward we cannot suppose it uh, examiner must have given information regarding carriage now as you can see the notes in note 3 it mentions that carriage included 2500 for collecting purchase if the carriage is relating to purchase then it must be a carriage inward and if instead the carriage is related to sales then it must be a carriage outward so this is the difference between carriage inward and outward drawing uh we know all know what does the drawing means when owner take out a uh, cash or goods from the business for own personal use it's a drawing the capital that is given is already uh, always an opening capital and closing capital is never given by the examiner water electricity is an expense wages and salary is also an expense advertising and general are also types of expenses rent receive either the examiner says rent receive or rent receivable it's the same thing it's an other income for the business now there are n number of adjustments let's see uh, in node one uh, there is always closing inventory we have purchased goods 4000 that have been omitted from the books omitted that we have forgot to write this entry so what we need to do we need to debit the purchase account and this purchase was 1000 by check so we need to credit the bank account by 1000 and 3000 purchase was on credit so what we need to do we need to credit the trade payable account by 3000 so the general entry would be purchase would be debit by 4000 bank credit by 1000 and trade payable would be credit by 3000 we have already uh, studied what this carriage belongs to during the year boris took goods for own use so my dear student whenever we are drawing out goods from the business for own use the entry for this would be drawing account would be debited and purchase account would be credited okay so the entry would be drawing would be debited and purchase would be credited now there is an adjustment in the advertising and let's keep it for later part three month interest is due so due would be accrued and this accrued needs to be added at the end of the year now in note seven depreciation rates are given premises is two percent straight line computer is always reducing balance method and fixture is normally straight line so cost or straight line means the same thing both are straight line trade receivable included debt of 2400 which was considered a recoverable this means this bad debt needs to be written off and after we have uh, detected the bad debt we need to calculate increase or decrease in provision for doubtful debt so what we need to do my dear student we need to prepare an income statement let's start up with this first of all we'll be writing the format 
Uh, first of all, it's a sales or revenue. Then we need to deduct return inward, also known as sales return. Then we leave one line normally and write cost of sale. Cost of sales means it is the uh, amount that cost us uh, the goods that we have sold for this amount. Okay, this is the cost of goods that we have sold this year. First of all, we'll be starting with opening inventory. Then we need to add purchase. If uh, return inward is being deducted from sales, so return outward would be deducted from purchase figure. Then we have to add carriage inwards. Carriage inwards belong to purchase and carriage outward belongs to sale or delivery of goods. Carriage inward is added in a cost of sale and carriage outward is recorded as expense. Then we have a drawing and drawing of goods. So drawing uh, only uh, goods drawing come here in income statement. If instead, if it is drawing for something else other than goods such as cash drawing or drawing to check or drawing of non-current assets. So it must not uh, never come in an income statement that would this would go to an SOFP directly. Then we have closing inventory. So uh, we are deducting closing inventory because this has not yet been sold this year. We'll be selling it the next year. So all of these plus minus adjustment would uh, come to cost of sale. This is the final value. We'll be writing two times cost of sale one as a heading. And uh, secondly, when we there is a final figure and to label the final amount. If we deduct net sales and cost of sale, we are left with a gross profit. Then we need to add other income. In other income, there is normally anything that is called receive, rent receive or rent receivable, commission receive or commission receivable, discount receive. This is also known as receive. Then we need to deduct expenses. So all of the expenses will go here and final answer will be profit or loss for the year. Let's just plug in the values. First of all, we need revenue. As you can see, revenue is already given. How much? 419,000. Then we do have any return inward. Yes, as you can see, return inward is there and with the amount of 7800. If we did a return inward from the sales, we are left with the value. And this is known as uh, net sales with examiner normally does not write not net sales. So I am also not writing it. Then we are in a cost of sale. We need to write opening inventory. Inventory at the start of the year is opening inventory. And the inventory that is mentioned in the list or trial balance is always opening. And the inventory that is mentioned in notes is a closing inventory. Now we have a purchase. Now, as you can see, purchase is 242 that is given. But we also need to um, keep the mind open for any adjustments that will affect our values that are given above. As you can see, note number two. Purchase of goods have been omitted from the books. So what we need to do, we need to add a purchase by 4,000. So 242 plus 4,000 becomes 246,000. Then do we have any return outward? Yes. Return outward sometimes refers to as purchase return or goods return to supplier. This means the same thing. Then do we have a carriage inwards? We have a total amount of carriage and either it's an inward or outward. How can we tell that? Uh, it's given in the notes as you can see. The carriage included 25 rate for collecting, collecting purchase and the remainder is for carrying goods to premises. So if it's relating to purchase or supplier, it's a carriage inward. And if it's relating to customer or sales, it's a carriage outward. So we right now we need carriage inward and that is 25 rate. Then do we have any drawing of goods also? Yes, in note four, as you can see, we have drawn goods worth 45 rate from the business. Then do we have any closing inventory? Yes, closing inventory is always given in node one. So see the way I'm highlighting the values so that I'm making sure that no adjustment has been missed during the question. Opening ad purchase, less return. This is just the final value would be cost of sale. So if I detect net sales and cost of sale, I'm left with the value of gross profit. Now why it is called gross profit? Uh, because it's not the final profit. And there are two other adjustments need to be made. Important adjustment one is uh, the, uh, other income and one is expense. And In other income, anything that uh, is named as received, rent received, commission received, or discount received, not the trade receivable. Trade receivable never comes here because it is a current asset. Now, as you can see, there is an item with the name of rent received. Now, is there any adjustment in rent received? As you can see, is there any adjustment? Now I cannot find any adjustment relating to rent receive. So rent receive would be written here directly. If the provision has decreased during the year, it must come in other income. And if the provision has increased during the year, it must come under expenses. Now in this question, provision is 
increasing i guess therefore i haven't written it under other income now gross profit at other income this is a no name figure finally we have expenses let us see expenses first of all i have written a loss on disposal now what is loss on disposal whenever we sell a non current asset at less than its book value then the difference amount is loss and if uh, instead we have sold it for more than its book value then the resultant value is gain on disposal now if it's written as a debit balance this then it is a loss and if the examiner mention as a credit balance then it must be a gain now loan interest as you can see we have a loan of 60000 and we need to apply 8% on it 60000 times 8% 68s are 48 so therefore total loan interest is 4800 but uh, as you can see the adjustment it's bit difficult a uh, 3 month loan interest is due so therefore uh, total loan interest was 4800 60000 multiplied by uh, 8% 4800 is basically for the entire year uh, but 3 months is accrued so 4800 multiplied by 3 upon 12 so therefore 1200 interest is accrued now as you can see we have already paid the interest how much 2400 so the amount that we have already paid also needs to be recorded as an expense and the amount that is accrued that is for 3 months also needs to be recorded as an expense so as you may be aware the uh, mnemonic that we studied earlier uh, appm appm stand for accrued plus and prepaid minus so the amount that we have paid also comes as an as an expense and the amount that needs to be paid in the future will also be recorded as an expense so this means that we have paid interest worth 6 months and 3 months interest is still accrued so there can be uh, the reason for that uh, can be that we have taken loan this year and it has just been 9 months since uh, we have taken the loan okay since we have taken the loan and this year we just need to pay 9 month of expenses and this can be only justification uh, if instead it was an entire year so then a uh, half interest have been paid then uh, 2400 must have been accrued uh, so the total amount would be 4800 when if the examiner doesn't mentions this adjustment that 3 month interest is due if the examiner uh, does not mentions 3 month due so we will be assuming that 6 months is due how can we say that uh, we can say it this way that if we apply 60000 multiplied by 8% then the total interest would be 4800 so if total interest is 4800 and we have paid already half of that then 2400 must have been accrued but the examiner here clearly mentions that only 3 month interest is accrued so therefore we cannot write uh, 2400 as accrued so we have other expenses as well such as administration now as you can see we have other expense such as administration now also we need to make sure that are there any adjustment relating to administration now i cannot find any adjustment relating to administration so we'll be writing it directly is there any other thing carriage outward Now, as you can see in the list, there is a, a total amount for carriage is given, and that is eleven thousand five hundred. And out of that eleven thousand five hundred, some of the amount that is twenty five hundred has already been charged as a carriage inward. So the remaining amount is carriage outward. So I need to deduct twenty five hundred from the original amount of eleven thousand five hundred total carriage in order to get the carriage outward value that is relating to customer. Then we have some other expenses as well, such as water and electricity. water is life and so is water an expense as well so water and electricity is an expense 12400 and we need to charge it directly because there is no adjustment we have some other expenses as well such as wages and salary there is also no adjustment for wages and salary so i am charging this also directly then we have an advertising and there is some uh, adjustment in advertising that needs to be taken care of uh, advertising that we have paid is 24000 and now what's the issue in it let us read note 5 advertising include 9000 this means the 24000 that we have paid uh, already includes 9000 and this 9000 is paid for a marketing campaign running from beginning of march till the end of august so we need to count the number of months from march till august march april may june july august so this means 6 months so what we need to do we need to divide 9000 by 6 months so therefore we are paying monthly advertising that is 1500 so what happens we have paid uh, advertising from march till end of august but 
our year is ending in the midway that is april now after march and april after using this advertising for two months uh, we our year was ended so therefore the extra advertising that we have paid for has not yet been used instead it will be utilized in the later accounting period so after march april uh, comes may june july august so this means four out of six months are basically prepaid so what we need to do we need to apply 1500 uh, multiply by four percent four years sorry four months so the total prepaid is six thousand that out of nine thousand six thousand is still prepaid so what we need to do uh, the total amount that we have paid was twenty four thousand as you can see out of this 24,000, 6,000 was basically prepaid. Now what we need to do, we need to deduct prepaid. And why do we need to deduct? We need to remember this prepaid minus PM and accrued plus. So while we deducting prepaid, we are deducting this 6,000 because this 6,000 amount has been paid, but has not yet been utilized. So it will be utilized in the next year. So therefore it shouldn't be charged this year. Instead, it should be charged in the next accounting period. Then we have general expenses, as you can see, we have paid general expenses how much we have paid general expenses worth 17400 so there is no adjustment in this so i'm going to write it directly then we have a depreciation so what are the rates for depreciation for premises dear students we have a two percent straight line so what we need to do we need to apply two percent on the cost of the premises as you can see the cost of the premises is one lakh so we need to just apply two percent to the one lakh and this is the amount of uh depreciation that we need to charge this year that is 2000 so how, how about computers for computers we have depreciation rate of 20 percent that is reducing balance diminishing balance now there's, there's a slight difference in calculation between straight line and reducing in a straight line we directly charge percentage on the cost but in a reducing balance method the percentage is not charged on cost instead we need to deduct the provision from the cost as you can see computer cost is 40,000. And the computer provision is 15,000. Provision means the total depreciation ha that has been already charged till date. So what we need to do, we need to deduct 15,000 from the cost. And we are left with a book value that is 25,000. And this 25,000 needs to be applied 20% in order to get depreciation this year. Now, this is the difference between straight line and reducing. In straight line, we charge a percentage on the original cost. But in a reducing balance, we... Uh, need to deduct the provision and need to apply percentage after deducting the provision for depreciation then lastly we have fixtures depreciation as you can see for fixtures we have 10 percent on cost for fixtures we have 10 percent cost so if it says on cost or it says the uh, straight line method it means the same thing and if instead uh, there is another thing that can be given and that is scrap value uh, if the examiner says that the scrap value for fixtures is 1000 or residual value is fixtures is 1000. So what we need to do, we need to deduct 1000 from the cost and we are left with 9000 and we need to apply 10% to 9000 in order to get 900 depreciation. So you must remember in a straight line before applying the percentage or before dividing it with the life, what we need to do, we need to deduct the uh, residual value or scrap value first. Lastly, we have irrecoverable and provision for doubtful debt. As you can see in the notes, one adjustment has still not yet been used. And this 2400 and this is an expense. Irrecoverable debt, also known as bad debt, is always an expense. And lastly, we need to calculate the provision for doubtful debt. Either the doubt has increased during the year or decreased during the year. Now, as you can see, the rate of doubt is 4% this year. So that needs to be applied on the trade receivables value. And how much trade receivable we do have? The trade receivable value is 37,400. Now out of this 37,400, as you can see, 2,400 has already been turned bad. And if someone has already been turned bad, we cannot doubt in them. Instead, we are sure that they will not pay us. Okay. So if we deduct the bad debt from the trade receivable value, I'm left with 35,000. And out of this 35,000, 4% people will not pay in the future. So it can be turned bad in the future, 4% of them, and that is 1400. Now, as you can see this year, we have a doubt of 1400 and we do have a doubt previously as well. And the last year we had a doubt of 900. So this 900 now needs to be increased to 1400. So from 900, we are going to 1400. 
So the difference between the two, as you can see, the doubt is increasing from 900 for, till 1400. So the increase is basically 500. So if the doubt has been decreased during the year, then the decrease in provision must be written under other income. And if the increase in provision is must be written under expenses. Now, what we need to do, we need to add up all of the expenses. And finally, uh, when we added gross profit uh, and other income, we had this no name figure. And from this no name figure, we need to deduct this expenses. And as you can see, there is a positive value that is left over. If it's a positive value, then it must be a profit for the year. And if instead was a negative value, then it must be a loss for the year. So I hope, dear students, you are able to understand how to prepare an income statement of sole trader.